Yo, what's up guys? My name is Frankie Nuts and today I'm gonna show you how to make my bass that I use in Supreme Funk. So let's dive into it. So today we're gonna make this bass. It's quite simple actually, but it's all about the processing and finding the right sweet spots. I'm gonna help you with that. So I'm gonna bypass everything and open up Serum. So this is the patch. Let's start with the inner preset. So for oscillator A, we're gonna use uh, basic shapes and put the width position to 2 and hit this edit button here. <coughs> and make this shape out of it that's all you have to do in here uh, put the volume all the way down because we're going to use LFO1 to modulate the volume make a shape like this and make sure you put it on trigger and on one bar so when you play it it sounds like that then for oscillator B we go to cymatic nuclear and we select a glitchy square. Um, for there we're going to use the sync, put it all the way to 12 o'clock and we're going to put the width position around here and the level all the way down and that's it, we're not going to use it. Because we're going to use FM from B, we put it right past 12 o'clock and it should sound like this so then we go to the filter put flanges positive put both oscillators in there so A and B by the way if I'm going too fast just pause the video and see what I'm doing and we're gonna find the sweet spot for this particular key I'm in G so I have to find the spot that suits the sound in here and the best way to do is uh, is to put the resonance all the way up and then scroll through the frequencies so it should be around there I put the LFO1 on there and now if you uh, press option and shift you can make it bipolar as you can see um, that's for Mac by the way for Windows it should be alt shift so when you drag it down like this, just put it on like a tree or something and then look for the right spot. That should do it. And put the drive up. And that's the base, like the basics of the sound. You can add a sub if you like, the same LFO. Uh, add some noise. I didn't use it this time. Uh, because I did it with samples actually uh, it's a really useful toy um, put the LFO 1 up the release so like 60 milliseconds that way it has a bit of a sustain on the end and then we go to the FX session so we put on hyper and dimension so for the hyper we use about 20% with a lot of detuning and for the dimension we put it on about 3% this is going to be the room of the sound we put it, the mix on 25% then I didn't use distortion on here you can do it if you like um, and I used the phaser so I put the rate down so it's not actually moving the phase but it's just static phase and uh, put the depth to the left frequency a bit to the right and the face all the way to the right and I used a bit of the LFO one on the depth and on the frequency um, I also added this the note LFO I put it on frequency with the bipolar setting again so shift alt or uh, option shift on Mac and that way if you move uh, with the notes this button right here will go up and down so you can see it here by the way the green little button 
it will go up and down when I play a different key in the bass. And you can make it even more drastic to adjust this. So when you do this, there will be a bigger difference when you change from key. So now every time when you change the key, this button will go up and down. Um, put the mix a bit lower, 35%. Like and then we go to the compressor, hit the multiband, gain it up a little bit, a bit less resonant, uh, release, sorry. The ratio to, to Eagles 1, and a bit less on the threshold. That's about it. So then we go to the AQ, because now we have a lot of high frequencies and we want uh, the sound to sound fat. So we're gonna make a notch in the bass and put the frequency about 70. We have to find a sweet spot for that and put LFO 1 on there. So now the frequency will go up and down when the LFO is playing. And you should find the right spot. I think I'm already there. bit less gain actually. Now it sounds bassy again. <laughs> so that's about it. Oh no, sorry. So then we're gonna move to LFO2. What I do here is I make a bit of a wave like this and I put it on bar and I'll make sure it's on off, not on triggered. So LFO2 will go on FM and on the width position of uh, oscillator B. You can do it like this, you can do it like that. It's whatever you like actually. And this will make the sound move while you're playing the riff. So not every note sounds the same. So you can see it going left to right. And these knobs, these knobs will change while while, this, while, while you're playing the riff. Uh, you can put it on more things, you can put it on the sync for instance. It's pretty cool. And then for LFO3 we're about to do the same thing. But we're just gonna do the last part of the riff. So we put it on bar again, it should be an off. And I put this on FM once again. So at the end of the bar the FM will be less or more, whatever you like. And we're gonna use it for the matrix as well, because the matrix is actually really useful. And this is a little trick that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. But here in the destination at global, you can select the master tune. So that means that with this thing, you can control the pitch of the entire plugin. So oscillator A, oscillator B, the sub and the noise with just one knob right here. Uh, and we're gonna LFO that with LFO3. So on this section with the master tune, we select LFO3. Make sure it's not bipolar, but just one way. And now when we put this on like minus 10, just to be extreme, or minus 20, whatever. Um, every time when this is playing, at the very end when it goes up, the sound will pitch down. I had it slightly in there, it's like minus two. But it gives a bit more of that extra touch and it's not too static. Because that's what I try to do in Serum. A lot of people sound the same in Serum and you have to find these small little techniques and ideas to make your sound not that static and the same as everybody else. So that's it for Serum. Then we go into the effects section this resonator plugin it sounds a bit like a comb filter it just gives an extra yeah resonance to it have a gain reduction from GST it sounds a bit like OTT it's slamming really heavily on the compression so with this button the sleigh you have to be careful don't pass 2 dB here and for the body it just gives a bit more, um, how do you say, push on the compression and it gives a bit more low end. 
Um, then here on the EQ, I add some more low end as well. This is the sweet spot. It's just to give that extra bassy feel. Um, and then we go to the reverb section. Uh, put the reverb on 0% all the time and I made automation for this and I make sure the automation will go up like here uh, when no MIDI is playing so for instance it's playing all the time here and then at the end the reverb goes up then it sounds really heavy and big I add some stereo some more OTT and some compression this is nothing too special just to make the sound louder and then I route it to my bus. This is for my drop actually. Um, and what it does is just a little bit of distortion, a little bit of OTT, a little bit of saturation, just compression, just everything that makes your sound sound fatter. Like if you're in Fruity Loops, you can do sound goodizer or whatever you like. Just a little bit of everything and your sounds will have more impact so I put everything on so now it's like super heavy and the sound is really fat so that's about it for this bass then you have to add your sub if you haven't done it already put your drums in there and add some different basses and you'll have to drop <laughs> And for now, you can just tweak a lot of these knobs in here and it will sound totally different. So, for instance, the flange up or down. More FM, change the, the whip position and the sync. Or a different wavetable. And you have a completely new sound. So. I hope my ideas and my techniques were useful, I hope I learned you something and I'll see you in the next tutorial, thanks for watching, peace! <laughs>